Outside of the shower room was a hallway that extended off to the left and right. There's a large iron door at the end. Let's take a look. They moved a few steps toward the door when Junpei heard the sound of metal on metal. Huh? They turned around. Seven was doing something to the door of the shower room. What are you doing, Seven? Well, I figure maybe we might want to come back here sometime. So, I stuck the broom in there to keep the door from shutting. All right, let's go. With that, he stood up and began walking down the hallway. He brushed past Junpei and kept going. After a moment, the rest of them followed him. Before long, they found themselves at the large iron door. They'd only been in there for a moment when June spoke up. Jumpy, look! Oh, you now realize exactly what he's doing, huh? He turned. There, on the right side of the hallway, was a piece of paper attached to the wall. What's up? What's that on the wall there? Oh, I, I think it's... Is it a map? A map of the ship's interior? It is a map. It says Sea Deck. So it's the map for this floor, then. We'll have time to study it later. Let's keep going for now. Junpei folded the map and stuffed it into his pocket. Back at the door, the four of them lined up right in front of it. And those of you that have, you know, memories, will recall what's on the other side of this door. And what should be waiting for us when we get there? Santa stepped forward. He grabbed hold of the door and then turned to look back at the rest of them. Ready? I'm gonna open it. They nodded. Santa nodded back and threw the door open. All four of them leapt through. What the... You're shitting me. It took only a moment for them to realize where they were. We are back. They had been there only a short time ago. It was the large hospital room filled with countless beds. Lotus and Clover looked up as they entered. Ace was there as well, although he looked like he had only just woken up. Lotus! And Ace! I'm glad you're all okay. Uh, Lotus, what are you... Revenge. The moment they spotted Junpei, Lotus and Clover headed straight for him. As she neared him, Lotus drew back her hand and slapped him open-palmed across the face. How could you do this to us? Her face was furious. Yeah. She grabbed Junpei by the collar and shook him violently. As he deserves, really. Clover didn't touch him, but the hate in her eyes was no less potent. It was Seven who stopped them. Knock it off! We got bigger shit to worry about right now. His deep voice echoed across the massive room. Lotus glared at Seven, but let Junpei go after one last vicious shake. What? Go have a look. Um... I stuck the screwdriver in the door. That door over there, the one without a number. As long as the screwdriver's there, it can't shut, so you can get in there. There's a shower room past there. I stuck a broom at the door there, too. Anyway, go take a look. No warning? You jerk! Then you're saying we can go in there without passing through the numbered door? Yeah, that's about the size of it. What the hell is in there? You'll know when you see it. You're a jerk! Um... Everyone is jerks! Fine, let's go. Lotus and Clover looked at one another for a moment, then nodded and stepped through the door. By then, Ace had made his way to them, moving with the stiff, shuffling steps of someone who has only just awoken from a lengthy slumber. My goodness. 
I know I said I was sure you'd come back for me. I didn't think it would happen so soon, though. Ace shook his head weakly. Should I go as well? Yeah. Seven nodded. Very well. Ace followed Lotus and Clover with his stiff, tired gait. The squeal of tortured metal made Junpei's teeth curl. It sounded like the noise a ghost would make. No matter how many times he heard it, he never got used to it. Every time, it put him on edge. It didn't help that there was a girl nearby who looked far more like a ghost than a living human should. It was Clover. <laughs> she sat on the edge of the bed, her head drooping listlessly onto her chest. Her eyes were blank and stared across the room at nothing. Her breathing was slow and mechanical. Aside from the rise and fall of her chest, she didn't move. Junpei felt as if even a nudge might cause her to shatter into a thousand pieces. Snake was probably murdered. Chances are he was killed the same way the Ninth Man was. Seven lowered his voice, likely in an effort to keep Clover from hearing what he had to say. There were four other people in the room with Junpei and Seven. Ace, Santa, June, and Lotus. Seven looked at each one of them in turn and continued. It's pretty straightforward. Not that hard to figure out how they did it. First, the killers got Snake to authenticate on the red to open door three. Then they shoved him into it. Alone. And waited nine seconds for the door to shut. Once that door shut, it was all over for Snake. But he didn't give up. He probably knew it wouldn't do him any good, but he probably ran into the shower room looking for the dead. It was a small chance, but it wasn't like he had anything to lose. Persona 5 may have something to do with letting anger out, but it also has something to do with shooting yourself in the head. I think. I haven't played it. I haven't played any of the Persona games. Unfortunately, it didn't work. The detonator is only deactivated if everybody who authenticated when they went in uses the dead. Oh, is that only Persona 3? Okay. Snake was the only one who went through the door. And then, 81 seconds after he was shoved in... That happened. I see. So that's what you meant by killers, huh? You need at least three people to open one of the numbered doors, including Snake. It wouldn't open for Snake and a single killer. Yeah. That means we're looking at multiple perps here. Junpei crossed his arms and grunted. Well, just in case, I want to make sure. Yeah, I heard that they said do not do anything past a certain date in the game online or we will take you down. Something like that. Yeah, Atlas kind of done goofed with this because they aren't going to be able to stop the tide no matter what they want. Let's say you're right. When do you think Snake was killed? When we all split up to look for the parts for the Reds, I think. Right after that was when we noticed he was gone. Okay, I wonder. We've seen this before. I don't know why I kept reading it. And we've seen all that before. The realization that Zero is actually one of them. Here we go. So things do change slightly. They stood in front of the elevators next to the stairs that led to the casino in the kitchen. Uh. 
Between the two elevators was a card reader with the Mercury symbol engraved on it. June pasted in front of it with the Mercury key card. Oh, that's the... Yeah, I found it in the shower room. Oh, I see. It's got the Mercury symbol. He took a deep breath and slid the card through the reader. It made a small beep, and the lights on the reader blinked to life. Now we can go. Seven people, including Junpei, climbed on the elevator. I actually think Atlas only really wanted that lock-in place until after the full release of the game. But it seemed, but everything I read, people made a much bigger deal out of it than that and said that Atlas was still shutting things down. I don't know. But I'm willing to bet Atlas just wanted a time frame where people wouldn't try to spoil the ending so it wouldn't hurt sales, at least in their opinion, or something like that. Looks like there's only two floor buttons working. C and bottom. The rest were destroyed or did nothing when pushed. Time to head down then. Junpei hit the bottom button. The door closed. Slowly, they began to move downward. Sometime later, all seven of them stepped off at the elevator and onto the bottom deck. They stepped off and saw the hallway to the right ended somewhere between 20 and 25 feet from them. The hallway in front of them was a dead end. But not a regular dead end. This is a numbered door. Yeah. It's door two. Immediately they began to discuss who would go through it. So who should go through the door this time? We don't need to be discussing who we're leaving behind this time, right? Right. It's set up so we'll be able to meet up again once we get through the numbered doors. Then there's no need for arguments at this point. Hmm. We should figure out who's going in first. Very well. Would anyone like to volunteer? I'll do it. The first to speak up was Seven. I'll go too. Then I suppose I need to go too, then. Junpei followed suit, which meant Lotus was, by default, the third member. Eight plus five plus seven equals twenty. Two plus zero equals two. All right, we're taking off. Okay, please be careful. So, instead of getting the third choice, if you go through the third door, it just kind of automatically shunts you to this one. So we will get to see the last door now. Jesus. You two are acting like you're married, you know that? Oh, um... June blushed. So did Junpei. <laughs> Don't be silly. Cut it out. Perhaps in an attempt to hide his emotions, he quickly turned away to pull the lever on the red. The door opened. And I don't know much about the PS4 because I don't have one, so I don't know how well the... I don't know what the settings are for their streaming and such. All I know is I've heard bits and pieces from people like Jim Sterling, so that's all I know. As they come to expect, there appeared to be a short walkway on the other side. All right, let's go. Lotus was the first through the door. Yeah. Let's do this. Business homework is done. Fantastic. Seven was next, and Junpei brought up the rear. Where the hell is it this time? I don't see it. Oh, there it is. It's right there. I watch Jim Sterling occasionally, yeah. Sometimes he has opinions on games. 
that I'm interested in, and he generally gives a pretty fair assessment of the game. Fortunately, it took them only moments to find the dead. It had been placed just inside the room, right next to the number door. They gathered around it and quickly scanned each of the bracelets. <sighs> I mean, I know Jim Sterling has the same feelings about most major developers that I do, so, you know. It stopped. Oh, yeah, it stopped. Junpei could feel his heart pounding against the inside of his ribs. Seven and Lotus were breathing hard and fast. <sighs> Man, I'll never get used to that. I'm not sure it's something I'd want to get used to. We should finish this game before imminent death becomes a normal thing. <laughs> Damn right. All right. Junpei looked around again. This hallway's pretty short, but it's got five doors. Three on the left, and only one on the right. Don't forget the last one at the end of the hall. Uh, but it's got a metal plate over it, so I doubt we're going to get anywhere that way. After taking a look around the room himself, Seven spoke. All right, let's get started. I think we'd probably better split up. Is you okay with that? Yes, no problem. Sure thing. Then I'll take this first one. Seven nodded to them and stepped into the room closest to him. I'll try the one next to it. What Konami did. Konami did many, many things. Konami is the Metal Gear Solid people. That is probably what they're most well known for lately and... Well, I can't say I'm a huge fan of Hideo Kojima, the way they kind of uh, treated him was really, really abominable. Yeah, Castlevania 2, and recently they've taken all these really great video game franchises that have been for years and decades and all this and turned them into pachinko machines. Instead of more video game development... They've decided to go with Pachinko development. Not fired him randomly. They kind of just decided they were done making video games and didn't want to put up with him anymore, so they just kind of dumped him. It wasn't all that random, and you could kind of see the writing on the wall a long ways ahead of time. Maybe there is money in Pachinko, but still, it kind of it's very, very grating that they would go with the quick cash money grabs and use these great licenses. So, you know. Well, I guess I'd better get started, too. He looked intently at the remaining three doors. <coughs> Admittedly, honestly, I feel way worse about NCSoft than I do about Konami, but that's more of a personal grudge. Oh. Oh, let's see, we have two screens to look at here. Emergence. A bunch of tiles on the floor that spell out Emergence. Can you actually look at them? No. Door in the back that we can't get through. Yes. That is my personal gripe with NCSoft. 
the way that they killed City of Heroes and won't give up the license, but they will use it for their cheap little MOBA knockoff. A blanket. Fourteen equals E. Oh, goody, we've got more hexadecimal. Yeah, City of Heroes. City of Villains, all that. No light shining on the sink. Faucet's too hard to turn. A really high mirror that doesn't serve any practical use. the desk and we can't open that drawer somebody made wavy blue lines on a mirror Weird shaped drain. No knob on the faucet, though. Moon symbol. want to touch it either. Hey look, there's the handle. A towel. Okay. We're not asking you to sleep on it. Hit him. Yes, it seems you'll die before you have a chance to grow old, Junpei. You know, Junpei, that wasn't really the problem. other side of the drawer. Okay. Hmm. That should be all for that room. The sink with no light on it. Did I already go into this one? I already went into this one. 
Here we go. Little tile in the drain, huh? Water doesn't work. Hmm. Parascientific escape you might be interested in. I don't know if the search actually changes depending on perspective. I don't think it does. And we have a sun symbol. handle. Yep, it fell off. It is an odd little shaped screwdriver, isn't it? They made my bracelet out of pure sodium! And now we have a knob. And I mean besides Junpei. Yeah, it doesn't look like a good place to sleep, no. Is it really a desk? We needed a close up on the screw just because. Nothing in there. And there are bumps on the back. Someone was really proud of that screw model. So we put drawer in here, and something fell when we did so. And we have a tile with what looks like a big red 14 and a blue X on it. Also a reverse 14 in gray. A 
I like my desk, but it does weird things. We are totally building a drawer zord. Okay, that's not it. There we go. Just going to kill us all by flooding. That's it. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Obvious. We are building a Monokuma Drawer Zord. There we go. And we got ourselves another tile. They're going to point out that the red looks like a 14. Oh. Junpei put the wet tile into his pocket. He was about to turn away when there was a noise behind him. What the? <clears throat> and it's time to actually learn a backstory for the first time. He spun around to see Seven kneeling on the floor. His face was rigid and pale. Droplets of sweat covered his forehead. Hey, what's going on? Are you okay, man? Ugh. You're sweating like crazy. Are you alright? He was concerned. He'd never seen Seven like this before. Slowly, the other man lifted himself to his feet on shaky legs. <sighs> yeah, I'm fine. Just got a little dizzy, that's all. His face was pale and his breathing was heavy. Sweat was pouring off his face and staining his shirt. That's definitely more than just a little dizzy. Are you sure? You don't look so good. <clears throat> Seven didn't answer. Half his face was twisted as if distorted by extreme pain, and his eyes were glazed. Finally, he spoke. What am... what am I doing here? Huh? His words made no sense. What are you talking about? We opened the number two door and walked in here. Don't tell me you forgot. No, no, that's... That's not what I mean. He shook his head several times as if trying to clear something from it. It ain't much, but I think some of my memories came back. I, uh, I, I, I think I've been here before. Uh. Ugh. Huh? I said I've been in this room before. No, it doesn't represent the size of his brain. It's not a walnut. You were here? When? Why? Aoi. Lion. Nona. Suddenly, Seven was bumbling to himself. They were words Junpei didn't understand. Seven's hoarse voice trailed off, and Junpei couldn't make out what he'd said. What the hell was that? Seven's brow furrowed, furrowed furiously. That's an awkward statement. And he ground his teeth back and forth. It's... It's right there. I feel like I'm this close to remembering everything, but I just can't! 
Seven stopped, frustrated. He pulled his hat off and ran a hand through his hair. Then suddenly he looked up, his eyes wide. That's right, an experiment. There was some kind of experiment going on on this ship. An experiment? What? What, what sort of experiment? They were... They were trying to control people. Or... Or something like that. What the hell are you talking about? Junpei didn't know what to make of Seven's story. Instead, he simply stared as Seven continued. Aoi, Light, and Nona. Those were their names. Well, some of them. The kids that were in the experiment, I mean. I think there were four or five more. But I don't remember all their names. <sighs> That's right. That's why I'm here. I moved my scroll wheel and it did one line. Fair enough. Seven began to mumble to himself and wander aimlessly about the room. Huh. He looked confused. So far as Junpei could tell, the man was simply rambling and there were odd twitches to his movements. Seems like time to run! Cradle pharmaceuticals. Those kidnapped kids. Was I working that case? Seven continued to mumble to himself about things that meant nothing to Junpei. Huh? Junpei didn't have any answers for him, of course. He couldn't have understood what was happening to Seven. All he could do was wait. After a few minutes, Seven finally stopped. Wait, under this bed. He crouched down and looked under the bed. His face registered mild surprise, and he began to mumble to himself again. The home's gone? No, maybe it was a different room. There's gotta be a ton of rooms on this boat that look just like this one. At last, Junpei could, contem could contain himself no longer. Hey, uh, what exactly do you remember? Maybe you could stop talking like a crazy person and tell me what's going on here. Seven stood up slowly. Well, it's not like I really remember everything. I've only got bits and pieces, and they're scattered and don't make much sense. I don't care. Tell me the bits and pieces, then. Junpei could feel it. Whatever Seven had remembered, it was important. Very important. Okay! Seven drew a large, muscled hand down across his face. As he wiped the sweat from his brow, he spoke. From what I can remember, I think I was... a cop. A cop? Yeah. I was looking for that group of kids that got kidnapped nine years ago. You remember that, right? It was all over the news. Yeah, uh, I was still in school. I don't remember all the details, but I do remember some of it. I think it was a bunch of kids right around my age. They all just disappeared. Nobody knew why. It was all over TV and the newspapers every day. So you're saying you were investigating it? Yeah, that's what it looks like. And I guess I found something. There was this medical company called Cradle Pharmaceuticals that had something to do with those kids. After I figured that out, I managed to get some information out of somebody who worked for them. I think it was... Tonight, a ship is set to take the children to a large passenger liner docked offshore. Yeah, that had to be it. That's why I went to the wharf. In the shadows, I searched the harbor until I found the ship he was talking about. There was a bunch of movement near it. Men in black suits, many of them were carrying large bags. The bags. There was something about the way they moved as they were carried. No doubt about it. There were human beings in those bags. I moved before I realized it. I came out of hiding, my gun already in my hand. Don't move! I felt metal touch the back of my head. Drop the gun. He kept digging the cold metal thing into my skull. <sighs> there was nothing I could do. I did what he said and laid my gun on the ground. Then suddenly, there was a sharp pain in my neck. A needle. A drug? 
That was my last thought. My face hit cold concrete. I was out like a light after that. The pictures will be explained in time. <sighs> I woke up on a hard floor. Damn it. Shit, my head hurts. Where am I? A small, shabby bed, a dirty sink, a toilet with no privacy. I'd seen it countless times as a cop. I'm in a cell, huh? Facing the toilet was a door set into the wall. I was still pretty woozy, but I made my way over to it. I pushed and pulled on it, but... <clears throat> Generic door not open. opening sound. Not like I expected much else. Would be dumb enough to put me in a cell and leave it unlocked. Threw myself against the door a few times, but it wouldn't budge. I knew it. I gave up and made my way back to the bed, and sat down. I sat there for a very, very long time. <laughs> Who knows how long. Then, I heard a faint voice. The voice was far away. I couldn't understand what it was saying. But I could hear one. It was pretty high. Probably a little kid. Yeah, he does look a lot different in those other shots. Huh? No, it was several. I hear five. Or six, maybe more. Where? Where are they coming from? I pressed my ear to the wall and tried to listen through it. No, that's not it. Left. It's coming from under the bed? I hauled on the little friend and flipped the thing over. And there it was. The bed had hidden an air vent under it. The hole in the wall was covered by a metal grate. I dropped flat on the floor and peered through the grate. I couldn't see shit. They gave him some massive hands. But I knew it in my gut. This was where those voices were coming from. Hold on. Why are there kids here? But then what my inside man told me popped into my head. Yowie hands. Tonight, a ship is set to take the children to a large passenger liner docked offshore. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I on that ship? It didn't matter. All I knew was I had to get to those kids. I checked out the metal grate. Could I fit? I stuck my fingers in and grabbed it. And then... Son of a bitch. I finally got the damn thing off. Sweat was dripping down my face, so I wiped it off and crawled inside. Junpei waited for Seven to resume his story. The longer he waited, however... The clearer it became that Seven had no intention of doing so. <laughs> he had gone silent and simply stared off into the air, his eyes blank. Hey, what happened after that? He waited long enough, but Seven shook his head. I don't... I don't remember what happens after that. I think I found some kind of door out of the duct. And I think I found some kids, too. Good. Why can't I remember what happened next? Ah, oh, man, what happened to the kids, Seven? Did you save them? I don't know. I don't know if it was me. 
I just... I've got this feeling. I think one of the kids died. A girl, I think. Huh? Deep in his heart, Junpei felt something very cold. <clears throat> Seven's head dropped, and Junpei saw on it a look of sadness, the likes of which he had never seen on the man before. The large man's eyes blinked rapidly as if he were fighting back tears, and he swallowed hard. <sighs> his sigh was like the melancholy setting in an old, abandoned building. He shook his head and spoke. Anyway, just... Please don't ask me anymore, okay? I really don't remember anything else. After that, Junpei could hardly try to force any answers out of the other man. It's fine. Don't push yourself. Going by what he said? Junpei left Seven to pull himself together, and instead began thinking everything over. The children who had been kidnapped nine years before? Apparently a company called Cradle Pharmaceuticals had been behind it all. They'd taken the children to the same ship we're on now. Oh yes, it does show up in Zero Time Dilemma as well. Amnesia is omnipresent. They've been brought here for an experiment. Seven said it had something to do with controlling human beings. Yep, nine years. Nine hours, nine persons, nine doors, nine years. The 16 children who had been kidnapped were the subjects. Seven had said three of their names were Aoi, Light, and Nona. I think that's all I got. Oh, and, and Seven is, or was at some point, a cop. I can't really use any of this information anyway. I will say that there's not a clear-cut protagonist in what I've played of Zero Time Dilemma yet. Because it shifts you around to multiple characters. And so far, the actual people that are at least player characters don't seem to be too bad. They're a bit dumb, but at least they seem like decent people. From what I've... And I haven't played very much of it, so... Yeah, that could all go out the window really, really fast. But, you know. I didn't learn anything about the Nonary game or Zero. Why were we brought to the same ship where they'd done those experiments nine years ago? Maybe. I can't confirm that because, like I said, I haven't played much of it. And just what the heck is this about controlling human beings? That's nuts. Did they really conduct an experiment like that? Before long, Junpei realized he'd spent quite some time deep in thought. I don't have time to just stand here thinking. I need to get moving. Junpei shook his head quickly to clear it, then returned to his investigation, thoughts swirling in his mind. One odd thing about that story? I think there are a few more than that. And we can use the mirror to reflect light. So if we shine the light on the mirror and back, we get sun and moon symbols. Honestly, don't remember much about this puzzle. There are reasons for that, but I honestly do not remember this much, uh... Be 
Shit, no, we can't. It's largely because I did not play this room often enough. Because you only have to go through it one time. Right now, I can't remember what the towel's for. Yeah, we can move the tiles, swap them out. Can I not get it to work? Okay, what did I have to do? What did I have to do here? When you know the rough idea, but can't remember exactly what step you gotta take. What am I missing? What am I missing? Just so we aren't here forever. Yeah, which one was it? Oh, that's right. That's right. That's what I forgot. So we have a sun symbol on the toilet and handle. Two. We had a sun and a moon with a four and seven on it. Three. And then four. And 
then if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. The other room, the toilet. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All our chances are going right down the drain, people. There we go. And if you remember seeing E equals 14, we have four tiles and four E's. Yeah, flushing toilets, the puzzle. Flush a toilet in a toilet. 